Oh, do we ever have a spectacle for you guys today? Right here in my hands is a tiny computer. And I do not mean this laptop. We have actually jammed the entire tiny computer inside the laptop in its hard drive bay. Check this out. Check this out. This is crazy. That, my friends, is an entire computer. It's not gonna light your world on fire or play the latest games at the highest frame rates, but it will run Windows. So, uh, let's try that, shall we? LTX. We're hosting the LTX 2018 live event on July 14th. It's an interactive meetup, tech out, and PC gaming extravaganza. Get your ticket today at the link below. So Zotac is no stranger to the mini PC game. In fact, they've got it all over their packaging. The original mini PC. We made the original. We made the original mini PC. Okay, 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 I've got it. But even they have never done anything this small. So this thing is not much bigger than a credit card. I mean, obviously it's thicker, but it is not much larger than a credit card. So inside this device, you will find an Intel Celeron N3350 processor, four gigs of RAM, uh, that is DDR3 memory, so low power DDR3 memory. You'll find 32 gigs of storage and Surprisingly, actually more expandability than some modern flagship smartphones like the iPhone. So you get your power button here, as well as an indicator LED. You've got uh, your DC five volt, three amp input. It's kind of a bummer that that's a USB micro B. It's not the most durable connector. You've got a micro SD slot. So that means that the 32 gigs of eMMC storage that are already soldered on can be expanded. Windows will just see that as a normal drive. Some tablets already do this, like uh, Microsoft's own Surface lineup, for example. And then over here, you've got two USB-Cs that also serve as DisplayPort outputs. And it even includes some dongles. So this is one of those situations where, because what you're gonna be able to do with it depends on the dongles that you've got for it, uh, an unboxing actually kind of makes sense. So we've got one of those same power to, I swear I've seen this before. This is the same one that comes with um, the drop cam. Uh, we've got a power cord. We've got a little mount so you can throw this on the back of a monitor or something like that. I guess you just put like one screw through the base of thing. I don't know, not the most amazing mount I've ever seen. Then you've got a few different prong options for the uh, power thing here. Oh wow, so you actually just fold that in and then do that. Oh, that is a weird international adapter. Let's fire it up, shall we? All right, so let's plug this in, plug that in, plug that baby in. Man, it is amazing how tiny this thing is. Also, fun fact, the cooling is all taken care of by the ribbed metal chassis. This thing is completely fanless and it's not even heavy. Like it's, it's about the same weight as the SSD that we used for our size comparison a few minutes ago. It's madness. So with this single dongle that they include, we actually get an HDMI output and we get two USB 3 ports. So that'll be everything that we need to run this thing. That's it. That's the whole computer. You know that you've reached full donglage when your dongle is the size of the computer. This is so crazy. Like, this is a computer. Wow, it's getting warm already. Oh, interesting. So, I mean, first order of business is obviously Cinebench, right? Oh man, I don't know if you wanna do that. No? How long does it take? <laughs> like 30 minutes. <laughs> okay. Maybe I'll just take Alex's word for it. What's our score? Well, do you want to guess? Sure. Wow, it is a dual core without hyperthreading, clocked at a whopping 1.1 gigahertz. I'm gonna guess 20. 
45. 45, okay. Hey, not bad. Oh yeah, here it is. You've already got the, uh, the score cash from last time. So that is less than one tenth the speed of a five generation old mobile processor. Realistically, something like this is intended more for um, digital signage applications or like the POS terminal in the local clothing store or whatever the case may be. It's designed to be seen, not heard and just perform basic functionalities. So could it do something like play an HD YouTube video? Because for better or for worse, Intel has baked GPUs onto the vast majority of their consumer CPUs. And that's annoying for those of us who just want more CPU performance and wish they'd use more die area for that. But it's good for people who want to buy very low end stuff and rely on the GPU to accelerate applicable tasks. So let's go ahead and, ooh, even scrolling's a little rough. Got that, got that delay. All right, so let's look up a really cool channel like Linus Tech Tips. Does this thing support 4K output? Oh boy, so yes, we are running at 4K right now, but only at up to 30 Hertz. So this is HDMI 1.4, not HDMI 2.0, meaning that you're stuck with a couple of 1920 by 1080 displays running at 60 Hertz or a single 4K running at 30 Hertz. Oh wow, the NCIX bankruptcy auction is still the channel trailer. So this is interesting. It's not a great experience because even like full screening and then going back to windowed mode on the video is pretty choppy. Oh, and we saw, we saw a hiccup there. But YouTube actually defaulted to 4K playback for us here. And other than the fact that the audio is not coming through, which could be any number of things, I'm not gonna blame it on this. This is actually playing back pretty well. I bet it's running warm though. Oh, it is. Oh, that's toasty. It's working hard. Oh, so the CPU's not struggling as much when we're full screened, but it has a harder time when we're running in the browser. Now, Zotac is known for a couple of things. One of them is mini PCs, but one of them is overclocking. So I wouldn't put it past them to put some overclocking capabilities into their BIOS. Turbo mode, hey! Oh, cool! Uh, okay. Should we enable power limit one? No, right? Let's disable the power limit. Here we go. All right, we're firing up task manager. Let's see if we get, uh, Whoa! This thing's running at 2.3 gigahertz now. I'm sure we have no way of guaranteeing that it's not going to, uh, you know, overheat without some additional cooling. And to be clear, it's still not super powerful. Microsoft account background task was consuming 40% of the CPU there. But maybe this will give us a little bit more headroom for our YouTube experience here. Uh-oh. Did it just shut down? It just, oh yeah, it, it shut down hard. I bet we need a more powerful wall wart. Oh, it's really hot. You know, if you need additional cooling though, I bet you could just hold the thing like this. It's like water cooling it with your blood, you know? Cause it'll, take the heat away and then your body will dissipate it as sweat. So I found this Huawei supercharge adapter down in the warehouse. It claims to be 4.5 volts, five amps, plus five amps, whatever that means, but it's heavy. Well, it's definitely not completely broken, so that's good. Okay, do you want to water cool it for me? Water cool it? Yeah, like just hold your hand on it. Uh, oh yeah, I guess we could put a fan on it. Wait, did it just shut down again? Oh, the LED's red. Well, this is one of the risks of overclocking. <laughs> you don't usually brick your hardware, but you do occasionally corrupt your OS. I can feel it heating up right now as it tries to load Windows. The light just went red. Damn it! 
All right, fine. We can disable or enable the power safety thing. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. But I'm leaving on turbo mode. Hmm. Numlock's not doing anything. So the other thing I don't know is if this thing being rated for four and a half volts is affecting it in some way. It was worth a shot. If I had one of the old uh, OnePlus Dash chargers. <laughs> Not scripted. Legitimately didn't realize that was there. Okay, we're booted off the dash charger. And we still have the uh, turbo mode enabled. 1.88. One, oh, oh, oh. Can we settle for a 100% overclock, Alex? Yeah. We can settle for that? Even if Microsoft account background crap is <laughs> still 40% CPU utilization. Oi. All right, let's wait for that to settle down and then we'll go ahead and try out YouTube again. Task Manager is pulling 26% of the CPU. Interesting. So you know what I bet's going on here is there's only so much power for both the CPU and GPU. And if we let the CPU turbo up, there's not enough left to play back 4K video, which would obviously be a priority for a device like this. It looks like it's fine now. Although, yeah, it does look like it's fine now, doesn't it? So if we want to run a game, we're probably better off turning off that setting, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's unoverclock and play some Worms, shall we? I still remember playing Worms 3D on like my buddy's like Pentium 2. So if this can't handle it, I'm gonna be pretty disappointed. That's a logo I've not enjoyed on my screen in a while. Okay, that's, uh, that is some pretty broken stuff right there. And none of my hotkeys work. Oh, that one works. Task manager will not come up though. Um, oh, for f oh yeah, there we go. All right, so maybe this will let us at least get to the menus. Okay, that's different. Here we go. Start a quick game. It's only 720p, but hey, that's running pretty well. Oh, it's still not actually perfect 60 FPS. How are you supposed to even control this? This is stupid. Make the hold like the right mouse button. Oh, oh. Okay. And I think we're done here. Anyone who thought that the mouse arrow changing its direction, depending on which direction you were moving, was a good idea, I'm glad that those people are all out of game development now, because that's awful. Okay, so clearly some of the stuff we did today was not how the uh, mini PC Zbox PI-225 was intended to be used. It's for industrial applications, digital signage, that kind of thing, and honestly, for that, it's just fine. If this was a review, I guess that would be the conclusion. It's not a gaming box, and if you were expecting it to be, then you were unreasonable like me. But it would have been pretty cool if we could have overclocked it. You know what else would be cool? Telling you guys about, uh, oh, Squarespace. Squarespace is the place to go if you wanna build yourself a beautiful website without a whole lot of hassle. They've got 24 seven support via live chat and email. They, all of their templates feature responsive design so your website looks great on any device. They've got commerce built into every one of their websites and they've got tons of great features like cover pages which allows you to set up a beautiful one-page online presence in a matter of minutes and the ability to publish content in the apple news format directly from the squarespace blog module so try it out today squarespace starts at just 12 dollars a month and you get a free domain if you buy it for the year we're going to have that linked in the video description so thanks for watching guys. If you dislike this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description. Not for gaming, but maybe for like inexpensive thin clients. Get it, thin clients, because they're thin. <laughs> also linked in the video description is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. You guys didn't laugh at thin clients. <laughs>